Does the Baha'i fast require us to engage in a two-step process in order to access its many spiritual benefits? Let's take a closer look. Let's go, buddy. Come on. So clearly we know that there is a first step. We read in our divine writings that fasting is a symbol. Fasting signifies abstinence from lust. Physical fasting is a symbol of that abstinence and is a reminder. That is, just as a person abstains from physical appetites, he is to abstain from self-appetites and self-desires. A clear component or step of the Baha'i fast that is required of us or any participant is that we abstain. Okay, not only do we abstain from food, but we also abstain from desires that pertain to the self, to our human, our worldly nature, our lower nature. So all the lustful appetites, all of the uh, selfish appetites, the vices, the addictions, etc., etc. The second step required, in my opinion, is spiritual abundance spiritual abundance. So if the first step is physical abstinence, physical deprivation, the second step is spiritual abundance. Now making an effort to consume a whole lot of spiritual goods, okay? Spiritual nutrition, all of the things which feed, nourish, and strengthen our higher nature, our spiritual reality, which is our true reality. Another way of looking at it is that the first step is detachment while the second step is attachment first step detachment from our physical reality a, a a minimization of our physical wants like food and drink and, and all the other things the second step is now an increased attachment to the divine an increased attachment to the kingdom of heaven what that looks like is an increased attachment to prayer to communion with source, remembrance of Him. Uh, increased attachment to the Word of God, reciting the Word of God, okay, tapping into that divine nutrition, which is the highest form of nutrition, the highest form of information, which reshapes our perception of who we are, of what the world is, of what the journey of life is, of what suffering is, of what, um, uh, of who our, our loving creator and maker is, etc., etc., as we tap into this highest form of nutrition and nourish our inner beings, okay, our souls, this adjustment of our perception uh, causes a cascade of positive effects, right? Your newly shaped perception will now produce positive thoughts, positive outlook on everything in, in this reality, this physical reality, and then that will affect your emotions, and then your emotions will affect your biology, right? from the inside out, from the top down, because our physical reality is merely a reflection of our spiritual condition, okay? And this is something that all of the divine prophets have taught throughout the ages. So again, the first step is detachment from our lower nature, a minimization of consumption of all the things that feed our base desires. Second step is an increase of attachment to all of the spiritual gifts and bounties which nourish our higher nature and strengthen our true reality, which is the reality of our soul. You know, we witness the same two-step process when it comes to healing. In the healing sciences, if you've ever cured yourself or helped patients a cure themselves, you'll know what I'm talking about. So the first essential step is always to minimize your exposure. It's to abstain from your old ways, from all of the things that have been poisoning you, to abstain from cancer-causing chemicals, right? From GMO foods, the cancer-causing glyphosate, the cancer-causing fluoride in your water supply, the gender-bending atrazine 
in your food supply. All of the toxic pharmaceuticals, which you may, you may have thought that it was medicine, but they merely mask your symptom and further poison you and acidify you, okay? Maybe it's vices and addictions, which uh, you're, you're dealing with, which carry the body to excess and produce disease. So the first step is always stop. It's always stopping, abstaining, avoiding as much as possible, okay? And the second step, the second required step now is now you have to make an effort to introduce the good that your body needs, that you need at an emotional level, mental level, etc. Now you need to introduce real foods, food as medicine, okay? Non-GMO, organic, wild. You need to introduce vitamins and minerals, orthomolecular doses, mega doses sometimes, right? Through personalized nutrition therapy. This is real medicine, okay? Nutrition therapy, homeopathics, essential oils, uh, herbal medicine, etc., etc. So now you have to introduce real medicine. You have to introduce real food, okay? Maybe you, you need to introduce uh, spiritual food to help you with your vices and addictions and fill that void in your heart. So you always have to engage that second step, okay? Make that effort to now introduce the good in your life because otherwise you're not going to experience a cure, guys. This here is white pine tree. And you can make tea out of this. I've collected some, put it in my pocket. You can make medicinal tea out of this. It has many medicinal properties. You wanna have some white pine tree tea tonight, Justice? Okay, so we see this two-step process everywhere, okay? And that second step of creating new attachments is essential because we are needy creatures, we are weak creatures, dependent creatures, and we've been created this way intentionally by our loving maker so that through our dependency and need and want, we would seek him out, find him, and attach ourselves to him. And through this attachment, through this nourishment, this strong connection, we would grow ever closer towards him, transform, okay, advance in the spiritual realms, grow ever closer towards perfection towards him and unravel divine mysteries unravel his beauty throughout the eternal worlds of God this is why we have been created he loved us hence why he has created us and revealed to us his beauty veiled in my immemorial being and in the ancient eternity of my essence I knew my love for thee right therefore I created thee have engraved on thee mine image and revealed to thee my beauty Okay, but I'm going on a little bit of a tangent, but I just wanted to emphasize that we see this two-step process everywhere. Okay, everywhere. You know, there's a passage in the Baha'i writings that makes mention of this two-step process, which is required. And I'm going to share that with you right now. O man of two visions, close one eye and open the other. Close one to the world and all that is therein, and open the other to the hallowed beauty of the beloved. Close one eye to this world and all that is therein. The second required step is, okay, now I have to open my vision, my inner vision, to another world, okay, a spiritual world. So it requires this conscious effort of stopping one thing and initiating another. See what I'm saying? I know that for many of you, the second step is quite obvious, right? And you engage in the second step, you intensify your spiritual exercises during the fast, and you experience that transformation, that uh, strengthening of your higher nature. By the end of the fast, you are a, a stronger you, a newer you. You have transformed, you have advanced on the spiritual journey. But here's the thing, it's not that obvious for a lot of people because I, I know this because for me it wasn't, right? When I was young, for many years, I did not understand the importance, how important this second step was, how important increasing our attachment to the divine 
to the spiritual things, how, how important it was, okay? So I would mainly focus on the abstinence part, the first step, abstaining from food, abstaining from drink because your parents are watching you, everybody's watching you, you have to, and abstaining from, you know, certain material, physical excesses, attachments, uh, uh, desires, wants, addictions, etc. right? So that was my main focus. But what happens when you just focus on step one, when you don't recognize the importance of step two and intensify, spend that time, spend that focus and intensify your attachment to the divine? and nourish your inner being, strengthen your higher nature. What happens? Well, you revert back to your old self. Okay? It's like it's like a wa waste of time. Honestly, it's a waste of time. Because isn't the purpose of the fast to transform you, to heal you, to recreate you, to basically allow your higher nature to reclaim control over your lower nature so that you can reap the benefit of the purpose of physical reality which is to be freed from all of these worldly chains, right? Free thyself from the fetters of this world and loose thy soul from the prison of self. Seize thy chance for it will come to thee no more. Isn't this the purpose of the fast? To free ourselves from these chains so that we can advance unhindered, soar in the heaven of, of liberty and freedom and the heaven of his good pleasure and advance ever closer towards him unravel divine mysteries and basically partake of his beauty right that's that's the purpose for which we've been created if we don't understand the importance of the second part okay the second step we will revert back to our old selves that's the, that's the consequence okay that's the consequence of not increasing our spiritual exercises of not nourishing and strengthening our higher nature we revert back to our old selves there is no progression no transformation no advancement in, in a way stagnation okay stagnation takes place another thing that happened to me as i remained ignorant of the importance of intensifying one's uh, attachment to the divine to to uh, uh the spiritual things during the fast is that I experienced aggravation. And this happens to a lot of people too. I experience an aggravation. Why? Because we are needy, dependent creatures. We have to be attached to something or many things at any given time to receive that satisfaction. And so as I abstained, I was left with a void because I didn't carry out the second step, which was attachment. First step, detachment. Okay, I did that second step was is attachment to the divine to receive that satisfaction from the divine i wasn't tuning into that so now i'm left with a void because all i did was stop was avoid was uh minimize right the things that i was already attached to and deriving satisfaction from so i experienced an aggravation and this would manifest itself throughout the fast so when the sun goes down boom compensate with one meal, two meals, dessert, and then another meal, snack at midnight, on and on, right? And yeah, so that really happens because when we don't carry out step two, we don't experience the fast as a time of abundance, spiritual abundance. We experience the fast as deprivation. And that will cause you to act out in many different ways. You, you now eat a massive breakfast out of fear of deprivation throughout the entire day, right? You now eat massive amounts of food in the evening and you may engage in all of those vices and addictions after the sun goes down to compensate because you've been deprived, right? So anyways, I'm just sharing with you guys a few of the insights that I have uh, experienced on my journey and I hope it helps you maybe in any way and I'd love to hear your insights. So feel free to share your comments, your thoughts, your experiences in the comments section, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.